For only the fourth time in American history, the U.S. House of Representatives has launched an impeachment inquiry against the U.S. President. The inquiry has now gone into a dramatic public phase. The word bribery is in play. But when all this ends, and wherever it ends, there's the U.S. 2020 elections on the other side. And the larger battle will be between, and I quote, white grievance and woke multiculturalism, says Edward Luce, U.S. national editor and columnist at the Financial Times. Ed joins us to talk through some of the dominant themes at this remarkable time in U.S. politics. Thank you for joining us, Ed. It's a pleasure. Ed, I heard the historian John Meacham say that if a U.S. president gets away with an impeachable offense, he will be doing it with the people, not against. In that context, what's your reaction to what you saw as the impeachment inquiry hit national television? It's still um, too early to tell because the whole game is about um, whether it shifts public opinion and whether it um, alerts more Americans to the alleged crimes that, that Trump has solicited and tried to carry out. And it's a little bit early to say whether it's shifted that needle. Um, it's certainly clear that um, there is not going to be any wavering amongst Republicans in the House. Uh, and that the game is going to be whether you've got a small coterie um, in the Senate when it goes to trial in the Senate around Mitt Romney and others. Um, and I guess public opinion, the direction of public opinion, will help decide how large that coterie is. We almost seem to know how the impeachment blockbuster on TV is going to end, but we're still watching. What are you looking for once that ends? Let's assume that it's dead on arrival in the Senate. What beyond that? Beyond that is the degree to which, if, if it is indeed um, a sort of slam dunk in the Senate, the degree to which amnesia then sets in and amongst the electorate, boredom with uh, the whole topic, uh, A, and B, a sense of impunity on Trump's part that he can get away with being impeached, so he can get away with anything. And if he can use impeachment or the trial to his advantage by having it stretch through January and February and therefore enveloping the caucus in Iowa, the primary in New Hampshire and beyond, then that would be, you know, an added an added advantage to him. So further beyond that, the spectre of an impeached Trump being re-elected is, is, a, is, is a pretty um, troubling one. Um, and as I say, that sense of impunity, the guardrails don't work. Look, they did the worst they could do to me uh, and nothing happened. So nothing can stop me. You say liberal dogmatism presents a quandary for the exhausted majority who do not belong to either cultural camp. Set the scene for us. Um, well, you've obviously got a, a very an increasingly ethno-nationalist, nativist base behind Trump. Um, maybe that's a quarter of the electorate. Um, and you've got a strong emphasis amongst the liberal grassroots in the Democratic primaries on uh, a stronger identity political response to white ethno-nationalism. And I described that in that piece as woke multiculturalism. Um, I suspect that the two will feed off each other. I'm certainly not posing a moral equivalence between them, but just in terms of the political practicalities of getting to the portion of the electorate that don't subscribe to either fully, uh, then you're going to get a sort of theological situation where there's going to be a lot of agnostics around who uh, are not going to feel um, particularly welcome if they don't fully subscribe to either of those theologies. That's, that's my concern, is that there's going to be an overreach on uh, the part of the liberal base that will make it easier for Trump to uh, be re-elected.